Let's read here. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light, so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. Let us pray. Our oh, dear Lord, I just thank you and I praise you. I thank you, Lord, for the wondrous gift of your word and the life that it infuses into our lives when we engage you in it. I ask, O oh God, that you would bless this time of diving into your word. I ask, O oh God, that you would just be with us. Open our hearts to receive what you have for us this day, that we might glorify you. For it is in your most holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Well, John 3, 16, that's a popular verse. If there's probably... If, uh, you were to be asked what's the, the most popular verse in all the scripture... Uh, my guess is the vast majority of people would answer John 3.16. Uh, we see it all over the place um, from people holding up signs at a ball game to imprinted upon plaques. One of the first verses, if not the first verse, uh, that you may have been asked to memorize in Sunday school or vacation Bible school uh, or some, uh, something like that. And uh, so it's, it's very popular for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that anyone who would believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. We love that. We love that verse. We love the power of that verse. Uh, and, and we love the good news that it brings to us and that it shares with us. Um, and and so um, why are we looking at this, this today? I, I don't know about you. I, 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 I kind of have a uh, kind of go on and off right now with even reading uh, the news I have for several weeks because it's just... Uh, seems like more of uh, the same, um, and um, it just between with the coronavirus and and then uh, all of a sudden we have all these uh, this this you know the new news that's come through with with the injustices that have taken place the police uh, the police shootings and the um, uh, the the subsequent riots and and protests and and just um, anger and rage and violence piled upon anger and rage and violence that just appears to be continuing to snowball and snowball and and instead of getting better uh, it just keeps getting worse as we saw over the weekend um, is uh, um, uh, it, they're they're in Atlanta uh, and and it's just Oh man, it, it just keeps it just keeps happening, and the rhetoric just continues to uh, uh, grow ever more decisive and uh, divisive and 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 hate filled. Uh, it's just oh my goodness, it, it just I, I just uh, it, it, I don't know about you, but it just becomes overwhelming. So I just have to get away from it for a while, and then I have to take a peek just so I kind of know what's still going on in the world, and I find out yeah we're still there, and then I have to to uh, get a, a way uh, away from it for a while. Uh, again, because it just becomes overwhelming. And as I was wrestling with our time together here this morning and and how to engage that and, and what to say, I mean, what do you say in the midst of all of this? And I thought, well, there's really only one thing to say, and that is God loves us. And that's what the world needs right now. The world needs to know that God loves them, that God loves them, that God loves you, God loves me. Um, God loves the world, as it first says, for God so loved the world 
that he gave his one and only son. And that's just such a powerful message that you and I need to know and embrace and hold on to because I'll tell you what, there's just not much love right now in the world. And the, here's the thing, not only is there not much love in the world, but the reality is that what is surfacing has been coming for a long time. This didn't happen here in the last few months. I was reading, as I was researching this week, I was reading some um, some studies, and uh, there was a study that came out at the beginning of 2016. This would have been uh, prior to either party selecting their presidential candidate. Uh, so this was pre um, the president, you know, before the presidential campaigns of uh, Donald Trump and, and Hillary Clinton. Uh, we were already, according to that study, a very angry and divisive nation. Uh, go back to another study even further back. This, the, the, this study uh, precedes actually 9-11. It was back in the early 2000s uh, before uh, 9-11. And it said we are, and, and this study discovered, wow, that we're a horribly divided nation and that anger and rage are the emotions of the day, it said. Uh, and I'm like, Wow, nothing's changed. Nothing's changed in 20 years. Uh, as a matter of fact, we've only gotten worse. And and so the question is, where are we as the church? Where are we as followers of Jesus uh, speaking into this? And the question becomes, are we pouring gasoline on the fire or are we inserting and, and just showering the world with God's love because scripture says that's what God came to do was to share his love. Now, I think one of the problems is, is that we as individuals sometimes have a hard time really believing that God loves us. See, if we don't believe that God loves us, it's really hard for us to show his love to the world because when we don't feel um, like we're worthy of his love, when we don't feel uh, like we can receive his love, um, then it's really hard for us to love others. And I think that's one of the problems that we have today. So the first thing I want you to know, I want you to know right where you sit, right where you are right now, that God loves you. God loves you. He loves you more than anything. He loves you He loves you enough and loved you enough before you were even born to send his son so that you could be reconciled to him, so that you can come back into right relationship with him because that's what he desires. He wants you to be a son or daughter of his, adopted. Paul writes that because of the spirit that is within us, we can cry out now, Abba, Father, because we have been adopted as sons and daughters of the King, that, that he loves us so much that we can cry out to him, Abba, Father. Abba is the Aramaic form of, uh, of the word father that, that is a very intimate relational form that best is described in our language as daddy or papa um, that, is, that has this very intimate uh, feeling to it. it. It's the it's the language of a child who climbs up on their father's lap and looks up into their eyes and says, Daddy, with that innocent trust that knows that 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 their dad is there for them and will just embrace them as they sit there and play with a toy or or talk about their day and tell stories and imagine or, or whatever it might be. And, and that that's the same type of thing that God has invited us into, that he loved us so much. He sent his son that, that we, and, and he, he invites us just to crawl up on his lap, look up into his face and say, Abba, Daddy. And that's how much... God loves you. Do you hear? Do you understand? God is love. God is love. Yes, God is holy and he is righteous and therefore there is judgment and wrath. But he took care of that through his son, Jesus Christ. He didn't expect us to deal with that judgment and wrath. He offered a way through his love that, that, that his entire wrath came upon his own son, Jesus, so that you and I, you and I could be made holy. You and I could be, could be uh, uh, made righteous, that we could stand before him with our garments white as snow because we've been washed in the blood of the lamb and we can stand there and we can cry out to him, Abba. Father, Daddy. And we can just love on him as he loves on us. 
and see Scripture when it describes this great love that God has for us. It it, it describes it, and, and it says that because of that love, because of how much God loves us, we therefore are to love others. We therefore are to love the world around us, the people that we come across, the ones that we engage, um, and, and that we don't get the right to pick and choose whom we're going to love. Uh, now, love does not mean unconditional acceptance of everything the person has done. Uh, I still am accountable before God. God loves me so much that he still brings conviction into my heart and about those places that I've hidden from him or that I've kept from him or or, or those 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 grudges I have, those the 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 anger I might harbor or 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 the lusts I might have or, or whatever. For each of us, he takes those kinds of things and he works them and he tries to, uh, to, to remove them from our our lives through the conviction of the Holy Spirit because he loves us so much. He doesn't just say, oh, it's okay where you are. He loves me so much. He keeps wanting to change me and we're to love others so that they can experience the love of God and so that in his love, he can transform and change their lives as well. And that's what we're called to do. Uh, and, and so scripture says, because God has loved us, we're supposed to love others. And I, I think that's so important uh, right now. Uh, I think it's so important that that we that we know that because um, there are so many people. You may look across uh, uh, the world at, across the room at, across the the social networks at, and say, "I don't like that person. I don't like what they stand for. I don't like what they say. I don't like everything they keep putting online." And so, and and so we get sucked into the arguments and to the divisiveness and to the hateful rhetoric and and all of that to try to make our point. And and we think we're doing the world a favor, but we're not. We're not. If we want to do the world a favor, we got to show the love of God because what the world needs is not more hateful rhetoric, not another opinion, not another person who's out there tearing other people down because of they believe in a different way. What the world needs is to experience the love of God in a mighty and powerful wave of the Holy Spirit movement through the world. And it has to start with you and me. It has to begin today with you and me. It begins with us recognizing and realizing how much God loves us that so that we are so over overwhelmed and overcome by the furious longing of God for us, how much he chases us, how passionate he is for us. And when we become overwhelmed by that, we become grateful, just overwhelmingly grateful and thankful to God. And out of that gratitude and thanksgiving, we will discover that it's really hard to hate our brother and sister. As a matter of fact, scripture says, because how much God loves us, we shouldn't hate our brother and sister. We can't hate our brother and sister we have to love. We have to love, uh, love him, love them, um, and to love our brother and sister because God first loved us. Jesus told a parable to try to um, get this, um, uh, get this uh, uh, across to us. And remember, he tells the tells the parable of the servant who comes before the master who owed a great deal of money. Uh, a very large sum of money, it's like thousands of dollars in our days and in our day and age, thousands of dollars, and could not repay the sum uh, to the uh, uh, to his master. And the master was going to put him in jail. And he begged the master to give him more time. He begged the master to uh, to just give him a little bit more time to try to pay it. Uh, and so instead of just giving him more time, the master showed him grace and mercy and forgave him his debt forgave him all of his debt and uh, said it, it's you know it's forgiven and so the uh the, the servant goes out he leaves his master's house and he gets out into the street and he runs across a friend who is also a fellow servant who owed him 50 bucks i mean he owed him a very small amount of money in compared to the amount of money that um, um, he had, that he himself had owed the master, and instead of feeling this great, overwhelming gratitude for what he had just experienced, and going to his friend and saying, "Hey, listen, forget the fifty bucks, man. God, you know, my, the master's been good to me, and I'm going to be good to you." No, instead, he grabs his friend, shoves him up against the wall. God, you know, has his has his uh, uh, shirt in 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 co uh, collar in his in his hands, and he says, "Now listen, if you don't repay me the money you owe me, I am going to have you sent to debtor's prison until you can repay it all." 
Well, another servant who had been um, uh, a witness to what the master had done for this servant saw what he was doing to his friend, and he went in and he told the master, he says, hey, you know that guy that you just... Um, you just let off. Yeah, I mean, he's out in the street roughing up some other dude that owes him 50 bucks, right? And so the master calls him in and says, you wicked servant, I forgave you, but you could not forgive your brother. So now you're going to go to prison until you can pay every penny back, every penny with interest. You see, he was shown grace and he didn't extend that grace to others. And Jesus tells us that as a parable to teach us how we're supposed to treat everyone else around us because God has been so generous with us. You know, he also tells in another place that why are you so worried about the speck in your brother's eye when you got a log in your own? Get the log out of your own eye first. In other words, take care of your own stuff. And the reality is, is that if you're like me, you still have stuff you're dealing with. Um, you have still have stuff that you're wrestling with be focused on that before God. Let the Holy Spirit cut that out of you. Get that out of you so that you can be a whole person, that you experience the wholeness of God, of the completeness of life that Jesus Christ came to bring. Because Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And stop spreading death and anger and rage and hatred. That's not getting the world anywhere. We've been an angry nation for decades and we're only getting worse. And the only thing, the only thing that's going to change what's happening, it's not going to be changed by any laws that are going to be passed. It's not going to be changed in any house of Congress, whether it be at the state or the federal level. It's not going to be changed behind any desk of any leader. It's only going to be changed in our hearts and it's going to start with the church. And we are we, my brothers and sisters, are the church, and it has to start with us. We have to experience in our own hearts the grand love that God has for us through his son, Jesus Christ, and we have to show that to the world just like God has shown it to us. For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son that anyone who would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Because God did not come into the world, Jesus said, I did not come into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world. And see, we're ambassadors now of that reconciliation, Paul says, because we have been reconciled to God. Now we are to go out and, and help others be reconciled to God and to one another. We have to be those agents of reconciliation, bringing reconciliation into the world. Is what you're saying, is what you're doing bringing reconciliation into the world, or is it further dividing us as, as, as humanity? We have to share the love of God. And then let God get into folks' lives. He'll do the changing. It's not your job or my job to change another person. I can't even change me. The only thing that can change me is God's grace and the power of his Holy Spirit. Why would I think for a moment I can change anyone else? Only God can do that. All I can do is share the love of God with others so that God can get into them and the Holy Spirit can get to work in them. The, the Spirit will do that. That's the Spirit's job. That's not my job. Nowhere in here does it say that's my job. As a matter of fact, it tells me specifically it's not my job. It's only God's. And so what, am I, what, what is my job? My job is to spread the love and good news of God. That Christ has come, that God so loved the world that he sent his only son. That's what the world needs right now. What the world needs is a healthy dose of the church stepping up and showing the love of God to one another and to the world around us so that the, that a grand movement of God and the Holy Spirit can work in this, in, in, in this, uh, in this world. Because the only thing that's going to change this world is the Holy Spirit. The only thing that's going to change this world is a massive movement of the love of God. It's not going to be you and me. You and you and I can't do it, but we are agents of it. We are we are ambassadors of his reconciliation. God's done the work. He just wants us to share it with everyone else. And then as he gets into each life, he'll do the work of transformation. He'll do the work of changing. He'll do the work uh, of renewing pe people. I don't do that. I can't do that. I don't have the strength or the power to do that. Neither do you. But you first got to know that God loves you. God loves you so much. And that when you... When you get so overwhelmed by that wondrous love of God, when you get so overwhelmed by that wondrous love of God, you start to share it with everyone else. And then in sharing it with everyone else, in sharing it with everyone else, they will be changed and transformed as well. Because that's what God does. That's God's thing. He does a great job of it. So let him do it, but share it. 
don't allow, we have a choice. See, we can either be ambassadors and agents of our, of our Lord and King as, re, as agents of reconciliation, or we're allowed ourselves to be agents of the enemy, really. Because when we are sowing division and hatred and rage and anger and bitterness and judgment and all that into the world, we're just helping out the enemy. We're just helping out the enemy. So I don't know about you, but I want to be an ambassador of my Lord. And so I need the Holy Spirit to come in and change me. I need to be reminded of how much God loves me so that my heart is so overwhelmed and overflowing with thanksgiving for that that it just spills out on everything else I do, everything else I say, everyone else I encounter. And so do you. We all need it. Because right now the world's not experiencing much love, and that's sad because the church is here. And so, church, we got to step up. My brothers and sisters, we got to step up. And we got to share the love of God. Because that's what Scripture has called us to. And when we do, oh, God will transform hearts, lives will be changed, and the world will be a better place. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, I just thank you. I thank you for the great love that you demonstrated for us on that cross. Abba Father, I thank you for sending your son. I thank you for inviting each of us to climb up onto your lap and look up into your face and just say, Daddy. Help us to experience the warm embrace of your love. Help us to come face and face with face to face with the reality of the great sacrifice our Lord has made. And help us, O God, to go forth, showing the world the great love we have experienced so that this world will be a different place. We thank you. We praise you. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen.